by Rido, a Swedish brand that was founded in 2006 that claims to have the ambition to translate memories and emotions into products and experiences, which is a very generic marketing ambition to have. By Rido is quite a popular brand. I think they got bought out recently for over a billion dollars, something insane like that, which is just mind-blowing. I feel like we don't really talk about them that much in the fragrance community. You know, a lot of people know about Byredo. I know about their famous fragrances like Bao Da Freak or Gypsy Water. I've heard about these fragrances, but I often haven't really experienced them myself, or so I thought. Actually, what you'll find with Byredo is they are the smell of London. I did not know this at the time, but a lot of people in London wear their fragrances. And you might be saying to yourself, Omar, what do you mean people smell of Byredo in London? Doesn't London just smell of pigeon excrement and weed? And maybe sometimes, but sometimes people do wear nice niche fragrances in London and you'll find that one of these fragrances definitely will just remind you of London. It's worn everywhere. So, because I felt like this brand was a little bit underexplored in the fragrance community, I thought that I would explore them and we would do so together. They have a discovery pack that I'm holding here in their website that I thought I'll purchase it, try out probably their most popular products. I think they have the most, their six most popular fragrances here. And I'll talk to you guys about my first impressions of Byredo fragrances and then my full impressions after giving at least one wearing for each of these to hopefully see if you guys want to explore Byredo yourself. If you've tried out Byredo as well, if you have any of their fragrances, let us know your thoughts about them in the comments below. Let's begin. Mr. Fragrant by HM Fragrant. Hey, it's very nice. I like the finish on it. Projection's great. The dry down is nicest. The dry down is nice with that sort of patchouli vetiver. I'm marking an eight out of 10. Mm. So I'm gonna do my first impressions on paper strips, first of all, and then I'll do the full wearings on my skin, of course. With Byredo, I found that a lot of people say their longevity is not good in, in a lot of their fragrances. And I've also found that they have note breakdowns that I don't necessarily agree with. Not necessarily saying they're wrong, just that when I smell the fragrances, I don't pick up all these notes. I will try to have the notes on screen as I'm smelling them for first impressions to see how much I'm matching it. But I'm just gonna to say to you guys what I think I'm smelling. I don't like being a reviewer who just reads out no breakdowns from Fairy Grantica because I don't think that's very inspiring. I don't think that's very genuine. So I'll just say what I'm smelling to kind of picture an overall impression of the fragrance. But hopefully Editing Unicorn will let you know what uh, note breakdown is available as well. So we have Bal da Freak. This is a fragrance that I was talking about. I think this is the most popular fragrance. I think I've smelled this before. I've definitely smelled this before now that I've got this discovery set. But as soon as I sprayed it, this is the smell I was talking about. This is the smell of London. It smells very clean, soapy, aquatic, a little bit aquatic and watery. Well, not aquatic, but just a little bit watery. A little bit sweet. It has like florals, a little bit of cardamom. I think this is unisex leaning a little bit masculine in my opinion. But this is just like a very soapy, clean floral fragrance with a hint of aquatics in there. And this is extremely sexy. I can see why this is their most popular fragrance. I feel like this is an incredibly unique and sexy signature that you can wear pretty much all year round. I'm not sure about longevity, but if you don't care about the performance too much, I think this will be a fantastic signature. This is so, so attractive. I love fragrances that are balanced, clean, and at the same time unique, and this fits all those categories. This is not like anything you've smelled before. This is just iconic. As soon as you smell this, you'll just know that this is by Rido, and this is why a lot of people wear this fragrance in London. You'll smell their product. As soon as I spray this, I was like, yep, I've smelled this fragrance lots of times before on other people. I didn't know what the name was, but now I do. So far, this was something that I'd give a 10 out of 10. I love this scent profile. Definitely an easy one to get into for the brand. Then we have Biblioteca, which if you are an expert in Spanish, like me, I'm not an expert in Spanish, guys, I'm kidding. Uh, I believe that means library. So I'm expecting something woody, dark, deep, something maybe reminds you of a candlelight that you use to read books late into the night. I don't know. When I think Biblioteca, I think library, and I don't really think it's gonna be a sexy fragrance. I have smelled this already before, but I'm just saying what I would have thought, first impressions, this is what I was thinking. I do know what it smells like though, but this was a very interesting fragrance when I eventually did smell it. So this is very candied sweet amber. This is a very, very sweet fragrance. It smells like something like labdanum or benzoin is in here. A lot of deep, sweet, maybe a bit of a fruity note in here. I think I, think I did see the note breakdown. I think there is plum in here, something like that. 
This is like sweet candied fruit with an ambery finish. It's a very elegant amber. I feel like if you like Initio fragrances, they're dark purple bottles, you're gonna love Biblioteca. It's very nice, very interesting. It's very different to their most popular fragrances here. I know Byredo has their darker like tobacco mandarin bottle. I don't think it's in the Discovery set. But usually I think I associate Byredo with more fresh, bright fragrances. Their bottles are usually white. They've got quite a minimalistic, sleek, you know, chic, Swedish style, the Scandinavian style. So I kind of associate them with more clean fragrances. So this is definitely one of their sweeter scents, something for the evening. I think it's very sexy and perfectly unisex. I don't like extremely sweet fragrances. So this isn't particularly my style, but I think it's good for what it is trying to be. I'm gonna try and wear it in this intense heat in Britain. Let's see how I manage with that. I think this is a very intense fragrance. It's definitely a cold weather scent. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying this video so far and you watch our videos regularly, make sure you consider subscribing. I think our latest statistics show that about 29% of you who view our videos are subscribed, which is a shame because I would love for that number to go to 40%, guys. If you really want to help our channel grow and spread the word about our fragrance channel, then click subscribe. It really helps us to uh, grow as a brand, and I really appreciate that, guys. So next up, we have a Gypsy Water, which is another famous fragrance from their brand, I believe. Um, I'm not sure what that means, a gypsy water. That's, um, <laughs> so where I grew up in, in England, we kind of had some issues with gypsies in the past. Uh, nothing against them, but you know, they were always on the news and I don't really know what I would think of when a fragrance is called gypsy water. I don't know what to associate them with. Anyone who grew up in Essex, knows what I'm talking about. So very dry cedarwood fragrance, definitely pencil shavings vibes. I feel like this is like Santal 33 if it was likable, and this is actually much more likable than Santal 33. So it's dry pencil shavings. But again, probably a bit of florals, a bit of green notes in here. So it's like green, sweet florals with a hint of cedar. And by a hint, actually, I mean a lot of cedar. This is like the, that dry pencil shavings effect that you can get mainly from cedarwood. So if you like a dry woody scent, that's actually very likable, fresh, clean, balanced, again, I feel like this is sort of uh, in the same ballpark as Balda Freak, as in the fresh, balanced, creative scent profile, but this is more bright, this is more for warm weather, I'd say. And this is a bit more masculine, in my opinion. So this is, seems like a really nice warm weather signature so far. So far, I'd give us a nine out of 10. It's a really cool idea so far. So next up, we have Mojave Ghost, which I've heard of. I think it's one of the more popular scents again, but I don't know the notes. I don't think I've ever smelled this before. So this is definitely proper, proper first impressions. Ah, oh, I feel like I've smelled this in London as well. It is definitely giving me Dolce & Gabbana the one vibes. It's very like woody, balanced, spicy amber here. This is like a bright, clean amber fragrance. If you like Dolce & Gabbana the one fragrances, like the, the one Eau de Parfum, or if you like uh, Vera Wang from Mendo, those brighter, ambery, more balanced scents, this is really sexy. I feel like this would be a really sexy date fragrance, actually. I really wonder what the performance is on this because this is incredibly sexy. I can kind of see this as if like the one became a little bit more daytime appropriate, uh, but you can also wear this on a date. I just feel like you can wear this as a really sexy signature, really bright, sharp amber, really nice. Again, I can see why this is popular. I don't know what this has to do with ghosts. I don't know if Casper had a, a role to play in the creative direction of this fragrance, but it's really, really good, it's really sexy. I'll give this a 10 out of 10. I have to test out the performance, of course. This next one's called The Rose of No Man's Land. So I'm getting, Portrait of a Lady vibes, I don't know why, just like a really rose heavy fragrance presumably of no man's land. So what, is that gonna be like the trenches of World War One? Are we going into gunpowder territory with this? I don't know, it just sounds a bit crazy. Again, the names often don't really correspond to what I would imagine they would smell like so far in this brand. So I wonder what it's gonna be like. Yeah, the rose is definitely in there, very clean. Again, a little bit watery, it's really interesting. Very soapy, clean, watery. Rose and not as feminine as I expected it to be. I kind of think this smells a little bit masculine actually. It's crazy for a rose fragrance. It has like a really handsome leathery woodiness to it, but it's very bright and clean overall still. So rose, maybe a geranium, maybe a hint of geranium in there as well. Geranium is sort of like the cleaner cousin of rose uh, notes. This is really sexy. Rose, clean, watery, woody, balanced, a little bit ambery. This is a really, I'm actually, I did not expect to like these fragrances so much. Pretty much all of them, probably maybe Bibliotech, but even that's pretty good. It's not my style, but I think it's still a good fragrance. This is actually a really impressive discovery set so far. It smells like an appropriate rose fragrance for men to wear, but I wonder what it's gonna be like on my skin, but that'd be very interesting if we have another men's rose fragrance to rock. Because of course, Declaration d'Un Soir by Cartier is now discontinued, so we need 
the masculine rose fragrances we can get at any point. And then finally we have Blanche, which I'm thinking now Edition Blanche by Allure Homme, by Chanel. Blanche means white in French. Is that French? Hold on a sec. It is white in one language, I know that for sure. <laughs> Just don't quote me on which language. I'm obviously a linguist, guys, that's my background. Um, and <laughs> I'm basically thinking this is gonna be white, bright, summery, uh, maybe white florals. I have smelled this before. So this is a really bad first impressions video, guys, because I've smelled like half of these already, but uh, <laughs> the other half I haven't. Um, but I think this one was quite interesting. So yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> it is very much white floral, laundry detergent vibes. Think like MFK's Aqua Universalis, that laundry detergent effects, or fragrances like Lazy Sunday Morning by Maison Margiela, synthetic, long-lasting musks that is very bright, summery. It's not my style. I think it's unisex and leading a little bit more feminine, but you know, some people might like this kind of style. People like those white floral laundry detergent fragrances. This might be for you. I'm not looking forward to wearing this as a full wearing, but I have to for the video. So now we've done all the first impressions, guys. I'm gonna give each one a full wearing and I'll get back to you with some short summaries, some final impressions of each of these. I'm thinking a lot of these I'm gonna be absolutely loving. I just wonder how the performance is gonna be. I'll see you guys on another day. Bye bye bye. Several days later. Okay, so I've given each of the fragrances in the By Rita Discovery set a full wearing. Are any of them worth the money? Bal d'Afrique has one of the best openings in perfumery in general that I've ever smelled. It is a beautifully balanced, fresh signature scent that is floral, fresh, linen-like, a little bit watery, a little bit aquatic, and it smells like it's a unisex masculine in the opening, but then as it dries down, it starts getting a bit heavier on the florals, becoming a little bit more feminine by the dry down. However, I think both genders can rock it. I think it's a beautiful, gorgeous scent that I get about six to eight hours on with a medium projection. I feel like it's a really beautifully balanced and blended scent that will get you compliments and it can be worn most of the year round. If you don't mind reapplying, this might be the perfect signature for you. I'm giving it a nine out of 10 overall by Rida Bibliotheca. So this fragrance does not remind me of a library. I don't know why it's called that. It's sort of like a candied plum and peach fragrance. I had a look at the notes, it's like a very candied fruit, fruity fragrance that is very heavy on the amber. It's ambery, sweet, a little bit woody, and it makes you think it's gonna last a long time when you smell it, but unfortunately I only, I'm only getting about 46 hours. So it's more of a unisex, leaning, slightly feminine fragrance that will be okay to wear as a cold weather date night fragrance. However, I think there are a lot of fragrances us men can gravitate towards to. It's not a mind-blowing blend and the performance isn't that great either, so it's a, it's a big ask for the price. I'm overall giving this a 6 out of 10. By Rita Mojave Ghost. So this is a fragrance that is focused on that bright, clean amber at the opening. I really love the opening. You saw that in my first impressions. Sadly though, it's not much of a bright amber fragrance later on. It's more of a floral scent later. It becomes a lot more feminine in the dry down. The ambery cleanness is, is there, so it kind of disappoints me a little because the dry down is not as good as the opening. However, I do think it's a very pleasant scent overall. It's woody, ambery, clean, floral. So I think it starts unisex leaning masculine at the beginning, then becomes unisex leaning feminine by the dry down, similar to Bow That Freak. Still a pleasant fragrance, and I'm still getting about six hours longevity on it. So I think it depends on how masculine you want your fragrance to be. I think it's a decent fragrance. I'm giving it a seven out of 10. By Rida Blanche. Now this is your classical white floral, linen-like, clean laundry detergent fragrance. If you like fragrances like Maison Margiela's Beach Walk or Lazy Sunday Morning or MFK's Aqua Universalis, those kind of fragrances, the laundry detergent stuff, you will like this fragrance as well. It's a kind of similar vibe there, but the performance is horrible. I'm not even getting four hours on my skin with this fragrance. It smells very similar to a lot of other stuff that's been out there. I don't think it's gonna be worth the price really. It's more of a warm weather scent that is a unisex leading more feminine. Overall, I'm gonna give this a five out of 10. Rose of No Man's Land is pretty cool. It's an interesting unisex leading masculine fragrance in my opinion, rose fragrance that I think would work well in the office. It's more of a bright, clean, soapy rose with a woody backbone in there. It's great for people who love fragrances like um, MFK's L'Homme à la Rose, for example, but that fragrance is more green. I feel like this is more palatable. This is easier to rock, and I think it's a really nicely done rose scent. It is not a mind-blowing scent. It sort of has that high-quality rose notes that you can detect in other fragrances like MFK's Oud Silk Mood. It sort of gives me that similar clean, soapy rose from Oud Silk Mood. I think they're using really high-quality stuff here. And I think it is simple, but done really well. 68 hours longevity, I think you can wear this most of the year round. I think it probably is worth the price. I'm gonna give this an eight out of 10. And finally, Gypsy Water. This is a dry sandalwood scent with a bit of a floral aquatic touch to it. I feel like 
if this is a superior alternative to something like the Labo Centau 33. This has that dry weirdness from Centau 33, but I just think this is really bright, elegant, more easy to appreciate. And it's not bad in its performance, around four to six hours. It could be a little bit better, but I still think this is a, quite a sexy signature. I can see why this is one of the more popular fragrances. Not as good as Bal Da Freak, but I would still give this an eight out of 10. It's a solid offering from the brand. And that concludes this video, guys. Have you tried any of Byredo's creations? What do you think of them? Overall, I think they are very Swedish. They are what Swedish uh, clothing is like to fragrances. Minimalist, but also chic and really, you know, stylish, elegant fragrances. I can see why this is a Swedish house. Now, I feel like personally, I would compare this brand to something like Le Labo itself, the perfume brand Le Labo. Although they are definitely not exactly the same in terms of their marketing, I kind of feel like if you're a consumer, you kind of kind of going to compare both of these fragrance houses because they have a similar price, they have that minimalist white sleek bottle that they uh, can be compared to. And I think this is better than Le Labo, for example. I think this is a solid niche house that really is Scandinavian in its approach. Very chic, very beautiful fragrances that are easy to love. I think this is a great house for people who love brighter scents, more minimalist scents, but high quality at the same time. And they like fragrances that just focus all on the scent profile. They don't care too much about performance. I don't feel like performance is their main priority, but if you're the kind of user who doesn't mind just reapplying throughout the day, you don't care about performance that much, I think you may fall in love with Byredo. I think this is a great house. And I personally do recommend them, especially if you can get your hands on this discovery pack. What are your thoughts on Byredo, guys? Let us know in the comments down below. Tell me, are there any other fragrances from Byredo you think I should check out? For example, I wouldn't mind buying a full bottle of Balda Freak. I think it would easily be worth it. Thank you for watching this video, guys. If you haven't seen our other videos on fragrance buying guides, make sure you check them out here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.